Today, guys, we are going to talk about the rule of names. Think about that title. What comes to mind about it? The rule of names is a work of fantasy. It takes place on, a, on an island called Satin's Island. It's a rather isolated place. You can tell that by how the people react to Blackbeard, who later on joins the story. But notice how the author uses language at various times in the story. Specifically with Mr. Underhill. His feet are turned in, so he walks awkwardly. Puffs of steam come out of his nose. He has long white teeth. And this also applies to the word good at the very first of the story. From the story's perspective, you could hard, you could not casually throw a word around, or perhaps even misuse a word. Mr. Underhill is a wizard, if I may use that word to describe him. His spells hardly work. They rarely last very long. He is not very good at being a wizard, and there is a reason for that. The action really starts about two or three pages into the text. Underhill has just bought eggs and liver, and he is on his way back to his house when he encounters the school children and the teacher, Polani, and they are discussing the rules of names, and there's two or three different rules. The kids give the right answers. She then asks about the rule, which Mr. Underhill answers quite quickly. The name is the thing. It's true name, and that controls the thing. And notice here that Underhill gets rather hungry as he looks at both the children and Polani, and there's a reason for that. Then, as the plot moves on, guys, then Blackbeard shows up. He shows up all by himself, which means that he cannot give his name. Hence, Blackbeard. He claims he is a peddler of goods, and all the people come to buy something from him, to remember him by. However, Blackbeard has other motives. Eventually, he gets Bert to take him to Underhill's house. On the way, Blackbeard tells him about his true purpose. He is here at Satin's Island to get or to reclaim his treasure and to kill the dragon in the process. And Blackbeard, at, toward the end of the story, calls Underhill out and uses his true name, Yavad, or however that word is pronounced. And Underhill reverts back to his true self. He is a dragon, which goes back to the pointed toes and the steam coming out of his nose and things like that. And remember how Underhill is described with the, the uh, long teeth and so forth. The two fight, and Bert hides for just a moment, and then he sees nothing. The fight is over. Now notice, guys, that he immediately goes and gets Polani. They get in the Queenie, and that's the, that's the ship, and they sail off somewhere. Well, Mr. Underhill realizes now that his cover is now blown. Remember, guys, he is actually a dragon. And it's been a while since his last really good meal. And that goes back to the idea that he looked hungry when he was looking at the children and Polani. Now, toward the end, when he does this, guys, I have a question. Why does Bert go after Polani and sail away? 
In fact, guys, if you were to take that, that paragraph out of the story, would it really change the story? Why is that part included in the story at all? And that, guys, is the question of the question of the hour. <laughs>